Hi, welcome to part four of the XCOM Impossible walkthrough, playthrough, I suppose. Um, uh, this is Confounding Light, it's the second slingshot mission and I've broken this one out separately because it's an absolute nightmare. You've got ten turns to activate four beacons on the train and then rush to the front of it. There's thin men littered around, I think there's five or six groups of them in total, and mutons will randomly spawn in every turn, either zero, one or two. Uh, most common is zero, but two aren't entirely unlikely. I get that a couple of times. Um, because you've got a ten turn time limit, ten turn time limit, it's very alliterative, you've really got to push up. You can't turtle, you can't hold back, you can't find cover and flank, you've just got to roll with whatever the dice throw you. So I move up to the train and I put the sniper up top because he'll have pretty good visibility. I head down the left here and uncover the first pack of thin men. Now that didn't go quite as I'd hoped. I think the best way to approach this level is with a couple of snipers who have battle scanners and a couple of heavies with rockets. I've got one laser rifle on one support character, another support character with three medkits, a sniper with very basic gear, an assault with basic gear, and a heavy with basic gear. Uh, my sniper fortunately is quite good. He's been upgraded quite high. Once you get squad sight, it's pretty hard for them to get injured because you can just keep them back. I run my support guy across the top to try and get a height advantage. That's one thin man down, there's still one visible, and there's another pack just up here in the train. What I recommend doing is playing through this a couple of times on uh, with the ability to save, so just on regular impossible, uh, because you'll be able to find out where the thin men spawn, and they're always in the same place. The mutons seem to spawn in the same place too, but exactly when they spawn is different. Anyway, I chucked a battle scanner up there, and now I'm trying to get a rocket into this area, which I do with limited success. Eventually I find a spot, but it's a bit fiddly. Anyway, fire the rocket in there and take those two thin men out before they've even had a chance to play. There's one thin man left on the left, and I bring my assault up the side here. I don't want to reveal there's another thin man pack up just ahead, and I don't want to pop them until I've uh, uh, nailed this guy. Angel takes a shot and hits for four, which is good news. The Thin Man uh, comes around here. Diallo takes a shot there, but she misses, unfortunately. Not much you can do about that. She's got a scope as well to make the most of the laser rifle. Uh, he shoots back at Angel on the roof uh, and misses against all odds. He's kind of exposed, so Angel returns fire, 80% chance to hit. Even with an assault rifle, it's probably going to go okay. And sure enough, it does, so that's kill. So there are no enemies visible at the moment. Sniper goes on to Overwatch, he's got opportunity, and I rush my heavy uh, all the way up. Uh, along with my assault. Rogue Diallo uh, moves to there to take cover and goes on to Overwatch. And I move Angel up a little further, even though I've blown out that cover, I don't really have much choice, I've got to keep on pushing. Excuse me. <coughs> just a little cough. And um, so, just continuing to press my way up, I can't remember exactly where the next Thin Man pack is. Uh, so I'm moving Rogue up onto the top of the uh, train, and sure enough, here come the Mutons. One drops in here. And he's now out of sight. Now fortunately I saw where he dropped in. So from the visibility that Angel has, he can see to there. He's The dude is three squares forward. One, two, three. So if I move Angel three squares forward, I can just move into his line of sight. I won't trigger his overwatch. And I can let my squad sniper take a headshot at him. Now he gets a critical, which is great. He hits for nine. But the... Um, dude intimidates me. He screams and intimidates and it's funny, he scares the sniper who shoots again. <laughs> there we go. And actually kills him. So that works out quite nicely. But that means my sniper's out next round. He's just going to be sitting there blubbering like an idiot. I've still got some thin men kicking around. I don't want to advance my assault too far because if I go around the edge of that hut, I'm going to uncover a pack. So I move my heavy up and bring Rogue up onto the top, hoping to be able to get some oversight 
Overwatch when I reveal the Thin Men. Unfortunately, what happens is two Mutons drop in. And at this stage, we've only got four turns to go. Fortunately, Overwatch deals with the first one with no trouble at all. The Sniper's still there, panicking from the last round, so that leaves me one uh, guy left. Angel's already in range, having lined himself up last time. He hits, at least. I move Rogue up there to just in range and take a shot with a laser rifle. Uh, she hits pretty solidly, leaving this dude with one health. Now, I've got two choices. One, I can run up here and risk showing the Thin Men. Two, Frag Grenade for a guaranteed kill. So I go with the Frag Grenade. Um, then it's a question of Overwatch for Lights Out and bringing uh, the Sniper into Overwatch after the turn goes. And now I've got three turns left. I've got to keep pushing on. There's only two packs of Thin Men left. There's one there on the left and another one on the right. With my Sniper and Overwatch, I prefer to do that at the beginning of the uh, round because he's now got Opportunist, which means he doesn't get the penalty for shooting and he can also get criticals. And there's a good chance that he'll be able to shoot at them while they're not in cover. So that's definitely preferable. Um, Diallo can't really see much. She's got a line on him, so what I do is run my Heavy down there. Her nickname's Lights Out and she lives up to her name and put his, his lights out with a flanking shot to eliminate him. So we got one thin man exposed, two more yet to uh, blow cover. Three turns left, realistically two and a half turns left, and I'm hoping no more mutons are going to pop in. I've got a 46% chance to hit this guy, and I kind of really have to go for it. I don't have much choice at this point. I can't be affording to turtle in. Unfortunately, it's a miss. And uh, that leaves me with uh, hoping the Thin Man will come around the side, giving uh, Lopez my assault, who's basically been doing nothing, an opportunity to shoot. Unfortunately, the Thin Man comes around this way, shoots at Rogue, and I think misses, thankfully. I've also laid down smoke with uh, Angel to try and cover Lights Out, who I thought was going to get shot at. Guess what? Two Mutons come in, there's two turns left. I'm kind of in trouble here. I've got an 84% chance to hit with a high crit chance there, and I do a bunch of damage. Fortunately, he doesn't intimidate. The worst thing that could happen at this stage is the squad panics, because then I'm not going to have the moves left to activate the transponders. I've got a squad sight shot here, and I managed to throw the muton pretty much halfway down the train with that. There's one muton left, and so I've got to move her up and hunker her down to get her in range of the transponder. I bring... Um, Lopez around, uh, sorry, I try to bring Diallo around and she gets shot at using Overwatch here and is critically wounded, which is not great. So now I've got four transponders and I've got to run to the front of the train and I've only got four guys left. Uh, fortunately, this guy's now had his Overwatch, so it's a question of bringing Lopez into play. Lopez uh, takes a run for it. The dude is already on Overwatch, but that reveals the next two Thin Men. So now we've got three Thin Men. Uh, and one muton, all causing all kinds of trouble. And I'm kind of freaking out that I'm not going to make this. And it's going to be a disaster. So, uh, the Thin Man there takes a shot and shoots, uh, lights out, hits for four. The hunker down prevents a critical. Thank goodness she doesn't panic. That would have been an absolute nightmare. This Thin Man uh, takes a shot here. He, I think he moves in and then goes for... Oh, he goes for Overwatch, I'm sorry. The Muton moves down and suppresses Stephanie, lights out, bombs. Um, which is basically meaning she's not going to be able to move. And that's a problem because I was counting on her hitting a transponder. But what I haven't realized is Lopez is actually right by the transponder. The heavy cover I ran him for is actually right on it. So that's worked out in my favor. This thin man, for some reason, takes two moves instead of one. Um, for which I thank my lucky stars. Now, we're into the last turn and there's not much I can do. I've got lights out suppressed. First of all, the sniper. From here, he can run to the first transponder. He can dash. So I dash him up to this one here. And because he's dashed, it'll automatically switch to the next character. But that's okay. What you can do from here is just move the screen back here, this way. And then click on him and he'll still be able to activate that transponder like that. So that's one transponder down. Three to go and I've still got to rush the train. No one is on Overwatch except that dude who can't see anyone. So I move Rogue to this transponder, activate that, sorry, Angel to that transponder. Rogue's <laughs> critically wounded. 
and then Angel uh, move him up again, but he's dashed, so now I need to go back and reselect him to activate the third transponder here. So that's three transponders down, one transponder, and I've just got to rush to the front of the train. Now Barnes, I wanted to move to here. She can't dash to the front of the train. She hasn't got move range, so I wanted to run her to here to activate this transponder. Um, unfortunately, what happens is uh, I'm like, why can't she move there? She's suppressed. She's going to get shot. This is going to be a nightmare when she comes out of cover. Um, but what I don't realize is Lopez, because he's kind of glitched and he's standing halfway up the stairs, he's actually already there. So I can use him to click on this. And then I've just got to run the Overwatch gauntlet of that guy. My assault doesn't have lightning reflexes. You really want lightning reflexes on this map. So he dashes there and I'm just going for it at this point. I just can't believe that thin man missed uh, thankfully he did, but I run Lopez up and get him to the front of the train, which ends the mission. There's nothing more to do, thank goodness. So from here, it's mission over. Uh, command checks in and goes, congratulations, we can now send the train off. And you don't have to get your guys off, it'll just automatically end the mission. It was kind of a mess. Um, fortunately, Diallo didn't die, but she did get critically wounded, which is going to hurt her will, but I'm unlikely to use her as a Sonic anyway. So 13 kills, zero deaths. I somehow managed to wangle excellent. What I recommend for that mission in the future, if you're doing it, you can delay it indefinitely. So level up your troops a bit. Get at least one assault with lightning reflexes and take um, a sniper with battle scanner. Anyway, promotions, executioner doesn't seem that great. So opportunist. Oh, he didn't have opportunist there. Okay, so I give him opportunist now. And Lopez earns a promotion, which finally gets him lightning reflexes. So you can see my squad was desperately underpowered. Close and personal, I don't war I don't really like. I don't like uh, relying on critical hits for anything because there's a chance they'll fail. Anyway, with the promotions done, two people wounded. Uh, we get 12 corpses and 18 fragments, so nothing that great, but two engineers at least. And now the ship is there, and the ship's going to pop up every two days, that mission for the council. And here it is here. And there is no way I am ready to storm a massive battleship yet. Absolutely no way. Fortunately, it seems like you can delay this indefinitely. Um, it'll disappear and then keep coming back. My alien containment project is complete, so now I need... Here's this UFO mission. I need to pull... Uh, I need to stun a sectoid and a outsider in order to complete the shard to reduce panic so I don't lose all my countries. This is going to be a bit of a nightmare. So I buy an arc thrower. I should have really bought two uh, to cover, but I'm hoping to be able to get these guys down. But here's the team. Uh, I've now got two assault rifles, a laser pistol, which I forgot to equip. Uh, I'm taking a rookie out because they're always kind of useful on a first on a UFO mission, especially with a laser rifle. At least they can hold down uh, the lightweight guys. And I've got a heavy who's got rockets who's just going to go a bit nuts. Anyway, this uh, video was kind of long because I ran out kind of slow, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye!